Hi, I'm Doug for Round Home DIY, and in this video I'll be making this set of industrial style shelves. I started by laying out all the parts for the legs, which are made from half inch size pipe and connections. For feet, I used floor flanges, which were connected using what's called a half inch close nipple to a coupling, which is what the shelves will end up resting on. Then for each new shelf, I added a 12 inch section of threaded pipe and another coupling. To complete the legs, I added a final flange, which will eventually be screwed into the underside of the wooden top. The next step was to clean up the pipe, since the pieces I ordered came with stickers and were covered with a coating to prevent rust. I'll have a link below to sticker free parts that should require much less preparation and can simply be coated with some paste wax or polyurethane to keep them from rusting. To clean these, I started by using a glass scraper to remove the stickers and tape. Then I used a little mineral spirits and a scrubbing pad to remove any sticky residue and to clean off the coating. Just keep in mind that once this is done, the pipe will start to rust fairly quickly if left in a humid environment. Next, it was time to start assembling the legs. Since these parts aren't made to exact tolerances, I spent a little while testing different combinations of pipe and couplers to get a level surface for the shelves. To disassemble any parts that were too tight to loosen by hand, I found that lightly tapping the couplers several times with a hammer made it easier to separate the parts. For a final check, I used two scrap pieces to verify that everything was lining up nicely. Then it was time to paint the legs, but before I started, I loosened the pipe slightly at the top of each coupler so that the legs could easily be disassembled later when adding the shelves. For paint, I decided to go with Rust-Oleum's metallic flat soft iron spray paint, and after two light coats, I think it turned out quite well, though next time I'll try the nicer pipe and see if I can get by without needing to paint. Next, it was finally time to start on the shelves. I decided to keep it simple here and go with 12 inch wide edge glued shelving panels from Lowe's. I started by cutting each shelf to length at my miter saw, and then headed over to the table saw to cut a small chamfer along the front edge of each board, though this could easily be done with a block plane or even a sanding block. I then did a quick test to determine which drill bit size to use, which for this half inch pipe turned out to be a 7 8 inch Forstner bit. After determining the hole locations for the legs using an inset floor flange as a guide, I clamped three shelves together and then drilled each of the holes at my drill press. If you don't have a drill press, it may be easiest to drill the holes in one board and then use that as a template to drill the holes in all the remaining boards. I then filled in any cracks with a bit of wood glue mixed with sawdust and once that dried, I sanded using 80 and then 120 grit sandpaper with the grain. I would try to avoid using a random orbit sander here if you're planning to apply a stain as the stain will make any swirl marks stand out very clearly as you'll see here in a little bit. Next, it was almost time for the stain. To try to eliminate blotches, I decided to apply an oil-based pre-stain conditioner with a foam brush. In the end, I'm not sure how necessary this was on the edge grain shelving with a fairly dark application of the stain, but it didn't hurt and it was pretty easy to do. For this project, I used General Finish's gel stain in candlelight. The recommended way to apply the stain is to brush it on in a heavy coat, wipe off the excess, and then apply additional coats after 12 to 24 hours if needed. But after three coats on a test piece, it still wasn't quite as dark and even as I wanted, so I decided to experiment a bit. For my first attempt, I brushed the stain on so that it was close to the final shade that I wanted. This may have been okay if I'd simply left it alone, but I thought I could wipe off a few spots of excess stain with a rag. The problem with applying it this thin is that the stain dries quickly and then it becomes sticky and impossible to wipe. And it was at this point that I noticed just how bad the swirl marks were from using my random orbit sander. So instead of just wiping off the stain with mineral spirits while it's still possible to do so, I let it dry for a day and came back and sanded it and the swirl marks off with 80 and then 120 grit sandpaper. For the next attempt, I applied a thick coat of stain, but instead of wiping it off heavily, I wiped it off with just enough pressure to remove the excess. And then I wiped it with lighter and lighter passes until it was finally the shade that I wanted. This isn't really a problem with other woods such as oak, but on this pine I found that it was easy to wipe off too much stain and end up with very contrasty grain. If you do end up with a lighter result, you can let it dry for a day and then try applying another coat. This board bottom actually ended up a little too dark, but by the time I got to the tops, I had mostly figured out how much pressure to apply to get the results that I was after. Once the stain dried for a day or two, I sanded the shelves very lightly with 4 alt steel wool and vacuumed and wiped them clean. Then it was time to apply the finish. I used armor seal and satin and applied it in three to four light coats, sanding again with the steel wool between each coat and very lightly after the final coat. And finally it was time for the assembly. 
I started by disassembling the legs, being careful to keep track of which pieces went together. I then worked from the bottom up, attaching the pipe to the couplings through each shelf to avoid scuffing the paint on the pipes. Next, I set the top in place and used the long straight edge to line it up with the shelves below. Once I was happy with its location, I then marked the location of the holes and the flanges and carefully drilled pilot holes in the top. To attach the legs to the top, I used 3 quarter inch flathead screws and touched them up with two coats of paint. At this point, the shelves were already quite stable, but I decided to run a bead of clear silicone caulk around the top of each coupling and press the shelves down into it. Once the caulk dried, it removed all the movement from the shelves as the caulk filled in any of the gaps and the holes, but just be sure whenever moving the shelves, you always hold it by its legs. Before moving them into their new home, I cut a few pieces of drawer liner to sit them on in order to protect the flooring, and with that, they were finally finished. Other than having to practice a bit with the stain, this project was relatively quick and easy, and I'm really happy with the way it turned out. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions for applying gel stain, please leave them below and be sure to check out our website article, which has a list of all the parts that were used.